Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome to another one of my pipe drive training videos. In this video, I want to give you some habits and routines that I recommend new users get into when they are adopting and getting familiar with pipe drive. Now, if you have any questions at the end of this video, please feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you would like more one-on-one -on -one help with pipe drive, setting up your account, onboarding your team, and even automating parts of your sales process, then have a look in the link in the description below to learn more about my pipe drive consulting options. So let's get into this video. So how should you be using pipe drive on a daily basis? Well, one of the first things that I do when I log in in the morning is I use, I go to my activities screen. Now, what I think most user, users are doing, and this is based on working with hundreds of clients over the last few years, is I think most people are going to their deals view, like this screen here, and they're kind of scanning this list and trying to work out who shall I follow up with, what do I need to do next, and kind of is just kind of scanning this page. The issue with that is if you have a lot of deals, it's very easy to forget about a certain lead and it's very easy for things to slip through the cracks. I highly recommend taking advantage of the activities feature within Pipedrive, and that's why I work from my activities screen. So what I'm looking at here is I'm currently on the today view. This is showing me any activity that I have assigned to me that's due today. I'm looking at my activities here. I could switch and I could look at another person's if I need to, but I'm just focusing on mine for now. And basically I start working through this list. So I need to uh, follow up with this de deal. I need to make a call. So what I can do is I can click this deal. It opens the deal here for me. And you can see this activity, this call in the deal view here, this is corresponds to this activity here in the list. So what I would do is I would get on the phone, I would pick up the call, I would follow up with this person and try and make progress on this deal. Now, if I successfully connect and I'm on the call with Chuck Bass here, I would then edit the activity. And then while I'm on the call, I would record my notes here of the things that we've talked about and what we need to do next. So here we go, I'll just put some notes in there. And at the, at the end of the call, I will then mark this activity as done. So that has number one, it's recorded the fact that I've completed a phone call. That's really important because it adds to the history on the deal. So if I'm looking at this deal again a week later, I've got that history. I can see that, okay, the last time I called Chuck Bass was a week ago and I've got my notes so I know exactly what we talked about last time. A uh, big mistake that I see a lot of users make is just not inputting information onto the deal and so people forget where they're at or what they need to do next. So I've recorded my call. That's gonna go in, that's gonna help for reporting as well. If I go to my insights here, I have this activities completed report. And so I can click into this and I can see how many activities I've completed this month, how many calls, emails, proposals I've sent, that type of thing. So logging your activities like this is also really important for reporting purposes. But let's go back to that deal. So here we go. So I've logged my call, I've put in my notes, so I've got a really clear record of what we talked about. The next thing I need to do is schedule the next follow-up. So we're currently in the needs to find stage. I'm trying to get a proposal sent. So maybe the next thing I need to do is I need to uh, prepare a quote. And so I'm gonna assign here, when am I gonna work on this? I'm gonna do this maybe tomorrow and I need to spend you know, maybe half an hour preparing that quote. So I've now assigned the next activity on this deal. And so tomorrow when I log in, in fact, if I, I can click over to tomorrow now, Tomorrow when I log in, I will see this quote on my today view when the date changes and I'll know, right, now I need to prepare that quote. So that's kind of the first thing I'll do is I'll work through all my activities. I will complete the activities as I go to record the calls, the emails and things that I've sent. And then I create a new activity as a new reminder of what I need to do next on each deal. Something I'll do to help with managing my activities is I will sync them to my calendar. So I'm in the personal preferences section here under calendar sync, and I have my Google account in this case connected. Now, when you sync your calendar, you can set up either a one-way or a two-way sync. A one-way sync is where if you create activities in Pipedrive, they can show up on your Google or your Microsoft 365 calendar. And so that's what I've done. In fact, you can see I'm not even syncing all activities. If I've scheduled an email, I don't need that on my calendar. But if I have a proposal presentation or a call, or if I need to make time for a proposal, I do want those on my calendar. 
So that's something that I really like because I can then work from my Google Calendar and I can see when I have appointments from Pipedrive. Now the two-way sync, what that does is as well as syncing your activities from Pipedrive to your calendar, it syncs the other way. So if I create an appointment on my calendar, it will actually sync that to Pipedrive and create an activity. This is particularly useful if you're going to use the built-in scheduling feature in Pipedrive. And obviously Pipedrive needs to see when you're available. Personally, I don't like the two-way sync because it creates a lot of activities for all the appointments and things that I have. And it adds a lot of extra sort of noise and mess to my activity screen. So I generally recommend you go with the one-way sync, at least in the beginning while you are getting set up and comfortable with Pipedrive. When I'm working inside of a deal as well, I do my best to keep the deal as up to date as possible. So that includes things like obviously checking what stage it's in. So once I've sent this quote, you know, I would move the deal to the next stage. I've got some custom fields on the right hand side here. So maybe I need to update my summary about what the deal is about. If I need to, I can update things like this budget, um, booking dates and times, any of the information that I need to record on the deal, I can, I can do that. In fact, one of my custom fields booking time is actually being highlighted here because it's an important field. So Pipedrive is kind of prompting me that I need to fill this in. So I do want to keep a special eye out for any important or required fields that need to be filled in. So once I fill that in, um, that, that should disappear. There we go. Something else I'll do on this screen is I'll check my expected close date here. This expected close date is used for forecasting your revenue. So I can say, right, let's just close that. And let's say I expect to close this deal before the end of the month, before the end of October. So I generally put an expected close date on when I'm reasonably confident that the deal is going to close. And that means when I go to my deal view here, rather than looking at the pipeline view, if I switch to the forecast view here, I can see which deals I'm forecasting to close this month. So as you can see here, that $7,300 from the Chuck Bass deal is being forecasted to be closed this month. So when I have a bunch of deals in here and I've forecasted an, a number of sales for the month, I get a good idea of my likely revenue at the end of the period. Now, something I do at the end of the day is if I have any activities left over here, rather than leaving them and letting them go overdue, is I will reschedule them for some time in the future. So let's say it's the end of the day, these green ones here are still outstanding. I just didn't have time for them. What I could do is select all of them. In fact, there's just these two here, which are already complete. So I'll deselect those, but everything else I've got selected now. And then using the bulk edit panel on the right hand side, what I can do is change the due date and say, right, I'm going to come back to these tomorrow. And uh, I can I can pick up where I left off tomorrow. The reason I think that's an important step to do at the end of the day is if you let them go overdue, you're going to end up with those overdue activities just building up over time. Your activities get messy. And most importantly, important leads will not get followed up with because you'll probably just forget about them because the activities are now overdue. So I never have any overdue activities, not because I'm necessarily always good at getting them done during the day, but because at the end of the day, as part of my sort of shutdown routine, is I will clean up and, and reschedule anything that I didn't have time for. Something else I'll do as I'm working on a deal is I will record any important notes. So just useful information, anything I need to remember, details about the deal. This is really important for my own personal productivity because if you're anything like me, if I revisit this deal a week from now, chances are I've forgotten everything about it. So I really rely on the notes, the activities, the emails that I can sync into here to really keep a really good history of what I've done on the deal and what I need to do next. So I've got notes, activities. I can compose and send emails from here that are gonna be recorded on my deal. I can upload files and attachments related to this deal. And I really just want to keep a really good history, especially if I'm working in a team and if maybe I'm gonna hand this deal off to somebody else at some point, they really are gonna appreciate if I've kept good notes and good history as well. Now throughout the day, as I'm receiving emails and I want to copy those into Pipedrive, what I can do if I'm on the essential plan and I don't have my email synced is I can reply to an email and I can BCC a special Pipedrive email address. So if I reply to this customer and I've put my universal address here in the BCC field, I can, I can reply and copy this response into Pipedrive. Now, if I use this universal address here, 
what Pipedrive will do is it will look at the contact, the person you're emailing, and it will look in the system to see if there is an open deal for that contact in progress. If there is, Pipedrive can automatically link this email to the deal. So when you click on the deal, you will see that email as part of the history. Now, what you can do is if you go to the bottom of your deal, if you copy this deal specific address, I could put that onto my, uh, into my BCC field instead. So rather than having Pipedrive automatically attempt to try and link it, or if the deal is already won or lost, which would actually mean that this wouldn't happen, I can use the deal specific address to force Pipedrive to put this into, uh, to attach this email to the deal. And so this is something I'll do throughout the day as I'm following up with leads or maybe even touching base with existing customers, I can BCC my emails into Pipedrive so I've got that history of my communication with my contacts in one place. Now, if you are on the advanced plan or higher, instead of using the BCC feature, you can actually connect your email to Pipedrive. So going to your personal preferences, if you go to email sync, you can connect your email like this Gmail account that I've connected here. And that means your email is actually in sync. Pipedrive is reading your email from Gmail and you can um, keep sending emails from Gmail like you normally would, or you can send emails from the Pipedrive system. So as I showed you before, if I click on this mail tab, I can compose and send an email specifically from this deal. Pipedrive is then gonna send that through my Gmail account. And the nice thing about that is that I can, uh, firstly, I can use templates here to um, fill out the email really quickly. And then when this person responds, the response comes back into the deal. Again, just so I have everything in one place, especially that important communication and follow-up. And finally, something else I might do, maybe not on a daily basis, but perhaps once a week or a couple of times a month, is I will use, I will visit this contact timeline here. So this is under the contact section and then contact timeline. What I'm doing with this contact timeline is I've created a filter called high value clients. And if I just show you the parameters of the, this filter, it's showing me any deal that is more or equal to $2,000 or any contact I should say with a deal of more than $2,000 that I've previously won. So here are, the, here are my uh, high value contacts. And what this contact timeline shows me is my history of communication with important contacts. So I can look down here at Tony Stark. He's somebody I've talked to most recently. And I can see I sent an email on October 6th. Going up a little bit, I can see Joe Bloggs I emailed on September 14th. Now, what's really cool with this feature is I can set what's called a follow-up frequency. This is basically how often do I want to follow up with this group of people? So maybe uh, a good use case for this is, yeah, if you've got high value clients, people you want to keep in touch with on a monthly, quarterly, annual basis, you can use this contact timeline. And the timeline ranks or sorts people based on who you need to talk to first. So I've got James Sullivan at the top. I haven't talked to him in a while. So the contact timeline is telling me, hey, you should follow up with James. And then Richard Branson second here. If I uh, log an activity, let's say that I call James Sullivan today, I get on the phone, I have a call, and I log that for today, mark that as done. If you watch what happens, James Sullivan turns black, he's no longer red because I followed up with him today. And if I actually refresh the page, he will probably go to the bottom of the list. So this is something I like to do every couple of weeks or maybe a couple of times a month is touch base with previous clients, people I want to maintain a good relationship with uh, long term. And again, this really highlights the importance of using your activities to document important follow up, not just on deals and leads you're pursuing right now, but even clients that you've worked with in the past. If you've completed a project, uh, if you're just following up to touch base, you should log that in Pipedrive so that you build that really good history of communication with every one of your contacts. So those are some tips and ways that I like to use Pipedrive on a daily basis to make sure I'm maintaining good follow-up with leads and past clients to keep my deals up to date with really good notes and that's going to improve the accuracy of my reporting as well. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. If you'd like more help with Pipedrive, setting up or optimizing your account, getting more out of the tool, and automating more of your sales process, then check out my master Pipedrive program. When you sign up, 
you'll be able to join twice weekly group calls so that you can connect with me and get help and your questions answered anytime you need support with Pipedrive. Or you can book private one-on-one -on -one consulting sessions with me so that we can take a deep dive into your account, I can show you key features, and I can even conduct group training sessions. And you'll also get access to my online course, which goes into a lot more depth and detail and advanced topics compared to my YouTube videos. So if you really want to master Pipedrive, then sign up today and I'll see you on the inside.